Uh, Mr. Minister, we're going to keep you in the panel. And it is my pleasure to invite uh, our very own uh, Greek Minister of Maritime Affairs and Insular Policy, Mr. Ioannis Plakiotakis. Welcome to our stage, Mr. Minister. So, you know, uh, our countries might be situated so far away, but they have something in common. They're both relatively small countries compared to sort of the global arena. And yet they're both leaders in something, and what connects both of them is the sea. Now, we know Greece is a global leader in shipping. Uh, Greek vessels transport roughly 20% of uh, uh, the uh, weight uh, of shipping, and I believe 60% of EU uh, shipping trade. And on the other hand, we know the Panama Canal as one of the seven wonders of modern engineering and um, one of the places of the world that has the most traction of vessels across the world. So, you know, both our countries can claim, despite being small, that they are sort of leaders when it comes to um, the blue economy, the economy of the sea and shipping. So I think it's going to be a very interesting discussion to hear some perspectives from both of you about what can our countries show to the rest of the world about how to innovate when it comes to shipping and the blue economy. So, Mr. Plakitakis, I want to start with you and ask you um, what was the impact, you know, COVID changed a lot of things. What was the impact of COVID on Greek shipping? And what does this show us about shipping overall, globally, the sort of resilience or not that Greek shipping showed against this challenge? Let me test it. There you go. First of all, I would like to, to thank uh, the organizers for having the opportunity for the very first time to present the, the new year of Greece uh, and especially uh, the Greek shipping industry, the impact and also its vital contribution to the wealth and also um, to the world economy. Despite the, the fact that we live in challenging times and the pandemic has uh, more or less rescheduled our priorities, Greek shipping has achieved to maintain its leading position at the international uh, uh, maritime trade. Also, the Greek Maritime Administration um, has proven that uh, its main priority is to safeguard the competitiveness of the sector and the high quality at global level. Mm -hmm. So, um, in a sense, uh, we, despite the fact that uh, we confronted COVID, despite the fact we are suffering from the Russian invasion to Ukraine, Greek shipping has managed to maintain its uh, leading position. Everybody knows the entrepreneurial spirit of uh, Greek ship owners. Uh, we control, you already said it, 21% of the global dead weight tonnage and 59% of the European fleet. Uh, so, um, the contribution of Greek shipping uh, is it, uh, absolutely vital in order to serve the uh, market needs of the global economy. Great. So, uh, Senor Rojas, I'm wondering uh, in your portfolio, which is investment, what, uh, how uh, important is sort of the maritime industry in Panama? And sort of in a similar vein, how have the recent cha global challenges affected that sector? Has it been uh, negatively affected? Has it been resilient? Well, as far as the portfolio that I manage, um, we're focused on um, the investments that happen in Panama. Uh, that's why I uh, gave the example of, uh, you know, dur during the pandemic, um, being able to having a, a, a new port in the Atlantic mm -hmm. um, that was announced last week of $1.5 billion. Um, and that the movement through our ports uh, during, during this pandemic increased uh, 19%. And that the revenues that we're getting from the Panama Canal um, this year compared to pre-pandemic numbers are increasing by almost 50%. But certainly, we are... Uh, we are a country that um, has tr traditionally 
and look forward to doing more business with Greece and, and our, our shipping registry uh, serves as best as possible in years to come to Greece. Great. Uh, now, one of the main themes that, uh, as always, is discussed in Davos is the idea of the climate crisis as sort of this impeding doom that uh, has to force us to change the way we think of our economy. And the shipping and maritime industries are part of that. So, Mr. Plakiatakis, I wonder uh, what sort of changes have you seen in the uh, shipping industry in Greece when it comes to the blue, so-called blue economy? And what do they show us about the direction of shipping uh, globally? Everybody should realize that shipping is, is a global industry. So therefore it requires global rules and regulations. Uh, Greece is very active in terms of IMO and the European Union in order to present uh, our proposals. And um, the Greek government uh, is very much in favor of carbon neutrality shipping by 2050. Mm -hmm. So the main challenge that the Greek shipping will face in the future uh, is the decarbonization. The um, uh, availability of um, uh, safe, alternative, zero carbon fuels and the related infrastructure is a main challenge. Uh, we still do not, we haven't reached the goal. We need uh, to cooperate, we need to join forces in order to reach the goal of uh, alternative fuels, safe alternative fuels. So all the chain that is involved in the shipping industry uh, should be active, such as the shipbuilders, the engine manufacturers, um, the ship owners, the commercial operators of the ships. So actually this is the main issue. So that's why we cooperate with our partners uh, at the International Fora in the uh, European Union in order to present realistic uh, uh, policies and measures mm -hmm. in order to cope and face the particularity of shipping. <clears throat> On the flip side from your investment portfolio, uh, sort of uh, overlooking the investments in Panama, Minister, uh, how th uh, what has the trend been when it comes to impact investing? Has there been more impact investment in Panama? Has there been, you think, a shift in sort of green and blue economy? And what does the government do to sort of uh, induce more of those, if you will? So definitely the environment is very important to Panama. And, um, Panama is one of the three countries in the world that's carbon negative. Um, Panama has 30% uh, of its land it's a natural reserve. And most recently, 30% of our oceans are now protected. We're one of two countries that have the, the, that protection over 30% of its oceans. Having said that, and understanding that we're going through a transition period, you know, 82% of our energy last year was renewable. Um, but we understand that our, our job is to serve the world. And the, the world, yes, we have a goal of uh, IMO 2030 of going towards natural gas, but some companies, some shipping companies, important shipping companies, some of them are not going towards natural gas, are going more towards biofuels. We don't know, as because we don't create the rules. It's, a, as the minister said, it's something that we have to all work together in consensus. If the world is headed towards um, LNG by 2030, mm -hmm. we're preparing ourselves. We have a great gas station from a real a, a location standpoint, which is a gas plant that we have in the entrance of the Atlantic in the Panama Canal. But if we go that way or the other, or times change because that's a consensus of the world, Panama's role will be to support the world and the maritime industry. Mr. Pelagiotakis, I have to confess to you, uh, on a journalistic trip I made to Norway about two years ago, uh, I was shocked to see that for short distance ferries, they've started to use hybrid ferries and occasionally electric ferries, which was you know, very groundbreaking to me. And the Norwegians were very you know, keen on sort of selling this as a concept. What I was mostly surprised by was that this was the result of government and industry really working together, providing incentives for solutions like that to flourish. 
So I'm wondering, in Greece, do you see sort of these partnerships between the government and the shipping industry creating sort of innovative examples? What are some of those and uh, how do you think they can change sort of the global economy? Well, we, we do have uh, close uh, relations uh, with the industry, uh, with the major shareholders. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, we're in a process of greening our coastal fleet uh, with uh, European funding. Uh, so um, the first tender will be launched this year. Uh, but especially in, in smaller sea routes, we are considering of uh, introducing electric boats. So, um, uh, yes, we are considering all these uh, options and uh, we are preparing, of course, uh, the shipping industry, especially the coastal ferry business, uh, for these changes. But at the moment, uh, the Greek ferry business uh, must survive. Yeah, of course. Due to the high oil prices, I mean, uh, everything has gone up. Inflation is one of the main issues that uh, uh, our friend, the Minister of Panama, he has already stated. And but this is the major effect of the of the Russian invasions in in Ukraine. So we must be very careful with with the sanctions. The sanction the sanction must not harm. The uh, our industries, our people more than that of Russia. We must be very cautious uh, to this end. So, uh, but in, in respect, with respect to the uh, greening our fleet, yes, we are in a process. Great. Um, and Mr. Minister, just to conclude this Q and A, and then I'm going to open it up to the audience if you have any questions. So uh, clearly, because of Panama's very important location when it comes to shipping, you do interact a lot with Greek ship owners. And I'm sure that from your portfolio, there must be sort of some Greek interest as well. And also, I know that there's a significant Greek population in Panama. Uh, so overall, uh, what do you think are some of the potential cooperations, pillars of cooperation, if you will, between our two countries that we, we could explore a little bit further. I think one of the points of Davos is that we're bringing together leaders from parts of the world that don't usually come together, but there's a lot of potential. So what do you think could be some pillars of cooperation between Greece and Panama? Well, thank you. I, I would say that um, we're a logistic platform that uh, is made towards, specifically the ports, towards serving uh, the Americas but we're here to, to really serve the world. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, many of the products produced in Greece can, through the Panama platform of our 23 free trade agreements and our connectivity to over 920 ports, uh, can, uh, can, can be of, of, of great use for, uh, for Greece. And also, and most importantly, I think we have to constantly uh, do more of a voice of the customer and understand how we can better serve the Greek shipping registry. So, Minister, we remain at your service. Anything that you believe that we can do better, we are here to serve Greece and, and serve the world. Thank you so much for your message. Are there any uh, questions from the audience? Yes. Please. No, no, I'm not in the panel. Like it's yes. Me to ask questions. Exactly. <laughs> I would like to ask our friend here, Mr. Patrini. No, Martini. Correct. Uh, how do you view, you know, if you look at the map, Panama is next to Colombia, it's next to Venezuela, uh, it's next to Ecuador, and then Brazil and so on. How, because we were talking about investment, you know, in South America there's a an unbelievable revolution now that most of the countries they will go to leftist left governments. Right? Mexico is already there. Brazil most likely according to the polls. Uh, we got, in Peru it's already I would say a very harsh leftist uh, government and so on. So we have a transformation of the whole region. How does Panama look into What's going to happen to the investment climate in South America with all those tremendous changes? Of course, they are not like in the past uh, leftists, right? They are, they are 
different type of elections, they're more pragmatic, but still, it is a challenge that the region all of a sudden, all together, they have this major change. Colombia also, by the way, as you know, most likely will have a, the first leftist, left-leaning uh, president. So, how does Panama, what, what do you think personally about this for the investment environment? And secondly, how will Panama deal with this? Okay, so, um, first and foremost, um, we believe we're a country that um, look for the balance and look for the consensus and look for the constant communication, especially in moments like the ones we're in. And having those communication channels are always very important. Second of all, um, we uh, the way we see is our role, for instance, Panama um, six months ago it decided to get together with uh, Costa Rica and Dominican Republic to have uh, an, an alliance for development of democracy. And we believe that, that our role is, is to you know, serve us as that bridge that we are a, a beacon of liberty and democracy. We are an example to follow um, on when you look at GDP per capita, FDI per capita, uh, obviously it works, it helps a lot having the US dollar and having that socio-political and uh, uh, economic stability. You know, previous to the pandemic, we grew 60% um, average for the last 15 years and previous to the pandemic, we had an average inflation of 1.6% in the last 40 years. So, um, regardless uh, of, of the difficult times that we're going through, that obviously affect the political and socioeconomic stability of different countries, um, we, uh, we believe that you know, we, we, we want the best for a region, we want the most stability uh, as possible to a region, and we will do our role as facilitators of commerce, of trade, and industry, understanding that uh, we're facing these very difficult times. Um, during the pandemic, very tough times, and the, and, the, uh, and the moment that we're living right now, uh, almost 50 multinationals decided to establish their headquarters in Panama because of the different situation. So in some cases, it was preventing a turmoil or having some sort of plan B. But in other cases was, for instance, what happened in Miami, that there was a real estate boom. And because of that, prices increased 35%. So many of the multinationals said, if we're having an operation for Latin America, outside of Latin America, and the costs are increasing so much, why don't we move to Latin America, have a headquarters in Panama, where you have the US dollar, the best connectivity, maritime, and also air connectivity, and and all this security and social political stability and special regimes that yes, tax is a part of it, but most important is also the ease of doing business, migration and labor mm -hmm. uh, advantages that we bring to the table. So. It, we, we feel that uh, even in tough times, all of these assets that we have, some of them hard assets, some of them soft assets, allow us to, to do well even in, in the most uh, uncomfortable and unstable of times. Thank you. Uh, any last questions? Any questions? Sure. Uh, I will be addressing to... Uh, Minister of Trade, Mr. Five Targets. Okay. There will be a question regarding um, EU's uh, maritime policy and also uh, Greece's maritime policy accordingly. So, uh, taking into account that um, um, uh, there will be a potential EU um, from the part of the EU uh, all embargo towards the Russian Federation, and also bearing in mind that a high percentage of um, oil is uh, being transferred through a uh, Greek seafarming uh, company. Um, how do you uh, recommend uh, potential uh, legislative provision 
that will work as a win-win situation for both parties. Of course, that depends because we have a uh, seat seatbelting companies, and uh, since that uh, flying the flags of convenience, of course, but uh, you can ask what would be. I think uh, everybody, especially in the European Union, must realize that uh, uh, Greek, shipping, Greek ship owners can secure the diverse energy needs of Europe. So uh, it's the best moment for Greek shipping, for European shipping, uh, to, have, uh, to preserve a new image of shipping. Because actually the, the society has not realized the importance of shipping. Nobody has realized this. So it, it, is, it is the moment now uh, to rebrand the, the image of, uh, of the European, of the Greek uh, shipping. And uh, one last issue I would like to raise is that there will be a shortage of uh, qualified uh, deck and engine officers, uh, ICS, the International Chamber of Shipping, estimates that there will be a shortage of more than 96,000 officers by 2026. This is a major issue. That's why we plan to uh, introduce, propose a comprehensive plan to enhance our maritime uh, uh, educated industry and this will happen by the end uh, of uh, this year. We would like to um, uh, persuade new youth that uh, the sea offers an uh, ocean of opportunities for a well-paid and a socially rewarding career. Thank you very much, Mr. Blakatakis. Thank you.